from Yoshi's in San Francisco. Welcome to the 2012 Local Hero Awards in celebration of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month presented by Union Bank and KQED. Please welcome KQED President John Bolin. Good evening and welcome to this evening's annual celebration of Asian Pacific Heritage Month. For 17 years, Union Bank and KQED have partnered for this special awards ceremony to celebrate local heroes in our community. Together, we've saluted almost 100 individuals who are a continuous source of inspiration for us all. On behalf of everyone at KQED, I'd like to thank Union Bank for your ongoing partnership. Community matters at Union Bank, and we are grateful for your dedication and support. Tonight, we're pleased to recognize five amazing people for their outstanding contributions. Nominated by members of the community and leaders, these local heroes working tirelessly in the community represent the highest values shared by KQED's mission of community service. I know you will be inspired by their stories. Congratulations to all of tonight's honorees. Now it is my pleasure to introduce you to tonight's host, Jenny Lim. Jenny is a playwright, poet, and performer. She is the recipient of many awards, including the James Wong Howe Award for her play, Paper Angels. She has authored and co-authored several books, and her writing has appeared in many anthologies. Please welcome Jenny Lim. Thank you so much. It's truly an honor to be here tonight, especially since I'm a second generation Toy San Play Yip Guangdong North Beach Chinatown daughter of a sewing woman made in America. That's right, I was born right here in San Francisco, North Beach, in a little alley called Winter Place, right on Mason between Green and Union. All you old San Franciscans know that Powell and Mason cable car runs down that hill. I want to tell you about Winter Place. I live in this foghorn moon of a fishhole alley. Every night there's a derelict dog, mangy with a cataract stare, licking the wounds of old North Beach. Fish and chip. Up chuck cheesesteak antipasti blasted against the antiseptic walls of trendy restaurants and glossy gelatos where MTV couples glide frozenly by, catching in the corners of their Ray-Ban eyes their own store-bought reflections. It ain't so bad. Sundry hookers straining their flesh bait out of doorways, windows, orifices of the Europa glistening like fish. It ain't so bad. Winos and refugees, bag can ladies, Italians, tourists, punks, junkies, boat people, and runaways converging on this teeming waterhole where the corporate buffalo roams. Where the corporate buffalo roams. Civilization reeks of crab shells, cappuccino, and cotex in shocking orange and pink day glow shopping bags ripped and spewing out the guts of Chinatown, 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 my Chinatown, where the lights are low, hearts that know no other town, drifting to and fro. They all come. The natives like homing pigeons, east coasters like fugitives, southerners like shipwrecked sailors, midwesterners like homesteaders, through the fog-laden cable cars plummeting over Russian hill backyards and narrow chopstick alleyways where camera-toting tourists eat cheap chop suey and snap moon-faced babies wide-eyed on their mama's backs out of curiosity. But it ain't so bad, the Indians once said, as they traded their land for horses, as they traded their land for beads, as they traded their land for fire water. Mo Yong Ya, the coolies reasoned, as they jumped ship only to sweat from those baskets with their pickaxes and dynamite 20,000 feet from the Sierras like wet human laundry, winter place. Winter place where the lights are low, hearts that know no other town. 
drifting to and fro. Chinatown, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, thank you. And now it is my pleasure to introduce George Tanaka, Senior Vice President and Head of Retail Specialized Markets of Union Bank. George is the driving force behind Union Bank's growth in the Japanese American community. Please join me in a warm welcome for George Tanaka. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny, for that warm introduction. I'm honored to be here tonight on behalf of Union Bank. And what a beautiful venue this year. Thank you to Yoshi's for allowing us to celebrate in this wonderful setting. This is our 17th year of the Local Heroes Award in San Francisco. And I'm humbled to be among the community's most inspirational leaders. I look forward to this amazing night each year. Tonight's honorees are leaders who are dedicated to serving our communities. They provide much needed support, inspiration, and energy to all of us. And they play an essential role in impacting not only our communities, but our state, country, and our world. Thank you all for your tireless commitment and the work that you do. As a responsible bank committed to our communities, Union Bank is proud to again partner with KQED for this special awards program. Our ongoing commitment to recognize the contribution of local heroes in the African American, Asian Pacific American, and LGBT communities remains strong. At Union Bank, diversity is our heritage, and we also know that our continued success as a company is directly related to our investing in the communities where we operate. You have our commitment, that we will continue to provide our support. Now I would like to briefly acknowledge some of our Union Bank colleagues who are here tonight to continue to support this program. First, we have Pierre Habis, Senior Executive Vice President and Head of Community Banking. Elaine Ginevro, Senior Vice President and Regional Executive. And her regional managers, Deborah Taylor, Dennis Duffy, Vincent Fucci, and Cindy Rosenthal. Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Information and Operations Officer, John Itokazu. And our Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer, Art Smith. And our Senior Vice President and Marketing Executive, Carrie Rubenstein. Please all stand up and be acknowledged. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Well, it's that time for the most important part of our program, recognizing our honorees. Our first honoree is Dr. Kimberly S.G. Chang. Dr. Chang is a family physician and site director of a community health center in Oakland's Chinatown. Her passion is bringing her expertise in medicine to everyone in her community, especially Asian immigrants and refugees. Let's take a closer look at Dr. Chang's inspiring story. Hello, I'm Pierre Abis of Union Bank. Diversity is one of our most closely held values. This is why we're proud to honor local heroes in celebration of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Let's meet one of our honorees. My name is Kimberly Chang. I'm a family physician at Asian Health Services, Frank Kiang Medical Center. The purpose of Asian Health Services is to serve and to advocate for medically underserved patients. The staff at Asian Health Services is amazing. We serve patients in 11 different Asian languages. We see pregnant women, children, adults, geriatric patients. The teen clinic is a confidential reproductive health care setting. It was really established because there were some commercially sexually exploited minors who started coming in to see us. If we give them the tools and resources, they can also take control and charge of their life and change as well. I love community health centers. Community health centers drive change and they respond to the community's needs. I do try to establish that one-to-one -one personal relationship with my patients. And so I can't just treat 
a medical problem, I have to treat the whole person. Uh, good evening, everyone. What a wonderful gathering of family, friends, and community. And congratulations to my fellow honorees. Tonight is a moment of reflection for me, and I'm thankful for the people whose support have uh, made this moment possible, the people who are my true heroes. Tonight, I am grateful for my family, my mom and grandma in Honolulu, my dad, grandparents, aunts, and uncles who have since passed but are with us in spirit and my brothers and sisters and cousins who are here tonight. I am grateful for my friends, my second family, who helped to frame the struggles and joys on this lifetime journey. And I am grateful for my mentors and teachers and for those who I mentor and teach. Thanks to all of you for your love, friendship, aloha, and support. I love you and I appreciate you. Tonight, I am especially grateful to my work family and friends at Asian Health Services and at Bonte Sre. Thank you for being a constant source of inspiration and motivation. You enable me to be the kind of physician I always dreamed of, one that makes a difference in the lives of our patients and in the fabric of our community. Whether it is by recognizing healthcare as a basic human right, or by being accessible to all regardless of race, language, culture, or socioeconomic status, or simply by standing up and saying, we are here to help and we care no matter what. For 38 years, your commitment to community and to providing the highest quality health care made it possible for us to find solutions, to create opportunity, and to build and strengthen our communities. When we started seeing commercially sexually exploited children in our community as our patients, kids as young as 12 or 13 who are being mistreated and abused in the most despicable fashion. You didn't shy away from the issue. Instead, you looked the patients in the eye and recognized their humanity, that they deserve to be treated as children and not as sexual objects to be bought and sold, abused and degraded. You embraced the difficulties of creating new systems and challenging the old to provide a supportive, nurturing, and healing space for these vulnerable children. You facilitate hope. Thank you for inspiring me to do the same. Tonight, I am humbled and honored to accept this award on behalf of the team at Asian Health Services and at Bante Sre. I am proud to be a part of that team. Um, one last thought as we sit here on this beautiful night at Yoshi's in San Francisco. I remember over a decade ago when I first moved to San Francisco to learn family and community medicine. Never would I have ever imagined that I would be up here today. Along the path here, I was helped by many, many people. So what I'm saying is, this is not an individual effort. And what I challenge all of you to do tonight is to not focus solely on what we honorees have done, but on what we all can do. It starts with mentoring and helping and leading the women and men and even children who will win this award in 10 or 20 years. If we help each other, if we lend a hand when it is so easy to ignore, we enable ourselves and those who come after us to accomplish great things. So I'm truly excited about what we can do together. So thank you to KQED and Union Bank for this award. Our next performer this evening is well known for blending the improvisational approaches of the jazz tradition with Asian musical instruments and sensibilities. Please join me in an official welcome for Anthony Brown's Asian American Orchestra. Thank you. 
It is now my pleasure to introduce our second honoree, Mr. Anil Godwani. Mr. Godwani could not be here with us tonight, so his equally accomplished and delightful mother, Gobi Godwani, will accept the award on his behalf. Both he and his mother work at the Indian Community Center in Milpitas, which Mr. Godwani co-founded with his brother. He uses this nonprofit organization to unite Indians through shared culture and values and to celebrate their heritage. That certainly deserves recognition. Let us take a closer look at his video profile to learn more about his great achievements. I'm Anil Gadwani. I'm the co-founder of India Community Center. Just in the San Francisco Bay Area, there is over 200,000 Indo-Americans. So we felt it would be great to have a place where everyone felt at home. Not just all of those Indo-Americans, but also people in the local mainstream community. There's lots of different activities we do for all age groups. There is classes in yoga, this is even a class that's called Bollywood aerobics that's become really popular. We have a huge interest in our senior community where we have senior programs happening multiple times a week. We actually also have one of the largest table tennis or ping pong facilities in the country and some of the top players in the country that uh, play and train here. Uh, several hundred kids take advantage of that. I guess there is a saying that there's something in the air where you walk in here and it just feels like uh, home away from home. It is that place that brings everyone together and we're very proud of that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A warm welcome to you ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here with you today to accept this prestigious award on behalf of my son, Anil Godwani, who's traveling. I would like to thank KQED and Union Bank for inviting us tonight. Anil has dedicated much of the past decade to ICC, India Community Center, along with his brother, Gautam, who co-founded co the center in 2003. I have had the ple pleasure to be involved with ICC along with the rest of the family and serve as a member of the board of directors and chairperson of senior programs. Anil has always been very focused on family and had a dream to bring together the community and share the richness and diversity of the Indian culture with the local community. Today, India Community Center operates over 50,000 square feet of space in the South Bay, and does over 500 programs annually for kids, for teens, adults, and seniors. Seniors call ICC a second home. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. We live in Silicon Valley and see startup success overnight, but community organizations take a generation to build, and you, <coughs> you need a decade just to see initial success. We have been so pleased that community has adopted the, this center as its own and has invested so much of its time and resources into it, getting it to where it is. If you haven't visited already, please come as vi visitors at Milpitas. And if you want to enjoy the Jollywood dance, which you saw the sample, all the dancers are here, some of them, not all, so you will enjoy and dance with us. Once again, thank you so much for giving my son, Anil Godwani, this honor. Uh, it is our pleasure, a privilege to be here tonight, and my congratulations to all local heroes. Thank you. For our next entertainer, I am delighted to introduce the recipient of numerous honors including the prestigious Youth of China Award. We can look forward to seeing him in two upcoming performances for the San Francisco Opera during the 2012-2013 season.
please welcome Ao Li to the stage, accompanied by pianist and coach Robert Moliconi. Disposto, ora dovrebbe esser vicina. Io sento gente ed essa non è alcun. Buia è la notte e io comincio mai a fare il simunito mestiere di marito. della mia cerimonia mi godeva leggendo e ne vederò io rite fare in me senza saperlo ma Susanna Susanna quanta pena mi costi con quell'ingenua faccia Quegli occhi innocenti, chi creduto l'avria, ma che il fidar sia donna, ma donna, e ognor follia. Aprite poco gli occhi, ognuno lo sa, c'è ognuno. is very famous Chinese art song, Da Jiang Dong Chu. Enjoy.
Next, I would like to recognize and honor a dynamic duo, Mr. Yvonne Jagadir and Mr. Anuj Vaija. These two extraordinary men co-founded Third Eye Films, a nonprofit organization that showcases South Asian independent films. They know that it is essential to share a community story and history, and these two talented men have dedicated their careers to making sure the South Asian community gets to showcase its stories, art, music, and film to the masses. Let's take a moment to view their video profile. I'm Ivan Jagadar. And I'm Anuj Vaidya. And we run the Third Eye San Francisco International South Asian Film Festival. We started around 2000, 2001, officially with monthly screenings. But eventually we moved from a small theater to the Castor, which is like the epic theater for showing right. films. One of the reasons we started Third Eye is to showcase more independent uh, South Asian films. So it's mostly films that are off the beaten track, not mainstream films. We also try and bring a diversity of images and layered images of South Asian, so it counteracts a lot of the stereotypes that are out there. Last year, one of the big focuses we had was on South Asian American cinema. About half the films in the festival were made by South Asian Americans. About six of those films were from Bay Area filmmakers. The South Asian community within itself is pretty diverse, and so the festival kind of helps look at our similarities and celebrate that rather than look at our differences. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And good evening. Um, it's with much gratitude that I accept this award on behalf of everyone involved with Third Eye San Francisco International South Asian Film Festival. I would like to thank my family. A bunch of them are here tonight, so thank you all. Also, uh, my friends and colleagues, and uh, the vibrant film-going community in the Bay Area for their ongoing support, and also KQED and Union Bank for this honor. Thank you all. I'd also like to acknowledge one of my own heroes, Carter Dillon. Carter was a friend, a mentor, and an activist who always worked to safeguard our civil and human rights. Um, she spoke of how freedom was a constant struggle. Her family came from California from the Punjab, India in the 1890s. She was born in Simi Valley and passed away two years ago at the age of 93 in Berkeley. I constantly think of what I've learned from Carr how important it is to stay actively engaged with one of the most influential storytelling mediums, film. Third Eyes Film Festival is celebrating its 10th year in September, and this award goes towards cementing their first decade. Our goal in starting Third Eye was to curate an annual festival promoting creative films from the rich and diverse South Asian American community. Third Eyes Film Festival strives to create an environment that promotes free expression, cross-cultural interactions and understandings, and one that combats intolerance and stereotypes. Without all the hard work and dedication from Third Eye staff, volunteers, we really couldn't have made it. So I want to thank all of you, staff, volunteers, filmmakers, cinephiles, audiences, and to everyone involved with the sustaining our annual film festival and our programs throughout the year. In closing, as Carter would have supported, we all need to participate, stay engaged, and share our stories in all sorts of ways, including through the expressive medium of film. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I was 18 years old when I boarded a flight from Madras, India to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was immigrating to India up to the USA, and I was very excited. I landed in Pittsburgh with expectations of skyscrapers on every corner, and what I found was an old steel city. I must admit I was a little disappointed. America was not what Hollywood had promised it would be. And by the same token, in my first year here, I realized that a lot of my American friends had some misinformation about what growing up in India was like. I had many colorful questions that year, and the most benign and the, most, and the one that is my favorite was this one. Hey, I know a Patel in Bombay. Do you know him? <clears throat> 18 years later, me and my friends have all come a long way. 18 years later, I've spent half my life literally here in America and half my life in India. And finally, I feel Ameri as much American as I do Indian. And in all these 18 years, nowhere have I had a better opportunity to bridge this cultural gap than at Third Eye Films. 
The South Asian community, as you've heard, is very diverse in terms of nationalities, ethnicities, religions, and languages. And what's often a point of contention back in the motherland is what brings us together over here. So at Third Eye, we celebrate our similarities and not our differences. Our differences are great for debate and conversation. They help us realize that our cultures and our histories don't belong to us, but that we belong to them. So at Third Eye, we focus on promoting films and filmmakers who defy stereotypes, challenge prejudice, and offer a glimpse into the diverse experiences of South Asian Americans. I was raised to believe that wealth comes in many colors, not just as green. And the support and encouragement of my community, both personal and professional, is what gives me the inspiration to do the work that I do. The unflagging belief that my family and friends have in me, the dedication that our staff and volunteers bring to the festival every year, the resources and support that our program partners and funders share with us, that is our wealth. So I thank you, KQED and Union Bank, for recognizing my community and for celebrating each and every one of them. Thank you. Once again, please welcome Anthony Brown's Asian American Orchestra.
on piano and flute, Melissio Magdaluyo. On bass and Chinese mouth organ, or Sheng, Mark Izu. On the Chinese hammer dulcimer, Yongqin Zhao. On saxophones and shakuhachi, Masaru Koga. I'm Anthony Brown, and we thank you so very much. Our final honoree of the evening is Mrs. Jerry Wong, a volunteer who has passionately pledged the last 50 years to supporting many different Asian causes in our community. Because of her efforts, thousands of people have been educated about the contributions of the Chinese to Northern California's rich history. She made this possible after co-founding the Chinese Historical and Cultural Project. The project preserved history by reconstructing the Ning Sheng Gong Temple which stood in the city's Chinatown from 1888 to 1940. Wong is very proud of her accomplishments, and we greatly admire and respect her determination. Let's watch Mrs. Wong's video profile. I'm Jerry Wong, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Chinese Historical and Cultural Project. For so long, the history of Chinese Americans has been untold, and so we wanted to show the vast contributions Chinese Americans made to Santa Clara Valley so we decided that a museum would be the perfect way to show that. This building is an exact replica of the Ngshengung Temple. The original temple was built in 1888. It served as a hostel, the Chinese school, the community center, and of course a place of worship. When I was growing up, I wanted to be an American. I didn't even know my roots as a Chinese. But through the years, I've learned to appreciate the culture that my family came from. Just seeing the faces of people when they come in and saying, I didn't know this about the Chinese Americans, gives the Chinese cultural project a great deal of pride. Thank you, thank you. I am truly honored to be standing here tonight as one of tonight's local heroes among all of these accomplished professionals that have come before me. When notified of this award, I thought to myself, how did I, a simple volunteer, deserve to be in such prestigious company? But as my husband sometimes would lament, why do you work so hard being an unpaid volunteer? Think how much you could earn, dear, by being a regular working wife, bringing home a paycheck. Well, of course, I would just smile like the obedient Chinese wife. And luckily for me, after 55 years of marriage, he has become resigned and even joins me in my passion for volunteer work. So thank you, dear husband. And thank you to my daughter, Kelly, my grandchildren, Melissa and Todd, who are with me tonight. Thank you for always standing behind me, cheering me on, and even following my footsteps because they are volunteering in their communities too. So thank you. Family, you are my heroes tonight. When I was growing up as a fourth generation Chinese American, going to an all white schools in San Jose, I never learned in any of our classes about the roles Chinese pioneers played in the making of California history. Never, never a mentioned. Our textbooks didn't tell us of the struggles of people like my grandfather, who came alone as a young boy in the late 1800s from China to a foreign land which discriminated and treated them unfairly, but yet he, like all the others, survived against all odds, worked in the gold fields, became a labor contractor in the farmlands of San Joaquin Valley, and even raised a family of 10 children on meager wages. So it was only when I became a teacher and a writer for Asian American community newspaper, I'll give a plug, Asian Week, did I finally learn of the contributions Chinese Americans had and were continuing to make in our communities. So I guess it was then that I began my crusade to tell everybody about this history. So tonight I accept this award, not just for me, but for the wonderful teams that I have been privileged to work with, dedicating time and energies to this same cause of history. My heroes tonight are the members of the Chinese Historical and Cultural Project who built the Ngshengung Chinese American Historical Museum in San Jose so that thousands of school children and visitors have learned about Chinese American history for the past 
20 years. Thank you, CHPP. My other heroes are those working with me when we did the capital campaign fundraising to open the Chinese Historical Society of America Museum right in the heart of our San Francisco's Chinatown. And on that grand opening day when then Mayor Willie Brown crowned the occasion by proclaiming it the Chinese Historical Society of America Day, and also the Doris Grover and Jerry Wong Day. And it was exactly 10 years ago today. Remember that, Doris? Wasn't that a wonderful occasion? And it made all that volunteering sweat and tears worthwhile so that Sue Lee could take over. And there she is over there carrying the torch for us. Thank you, Sue. Another group of heroes that I've been happy to work with and share this award with tonight are my fellow volunteer board members who lead the crusade of the Angel Island Immigration Station Foundation to bring to the attention to the American public the history of the unfair rulings and the treatment all immigrants from the Far East faced in trying to enter America through Angel Island during 1910 to 1940. I salute you Angel Island people back there. Thank you for coming. But most of all, I think I better share this award with all of my friends who came here tonight. They are my heroes because they always open their hearts and doors to me when I come knocking with my volunteer hat on and my hand out. <laughs> In conclusion, I want to thank Union Bank, KQED for recognizing Asian Pacific American Heritage Month and honoring each year heroes who have led our Asian American communities to the important roles they play in American society. I'd be honored to volunteer on your team any day. <laughs> so thank you, KQED, thank you, Union Bank, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you. Our final performer this evening has brought new expression to a number of Hawaiian art forms. Millions have come to know the work of Kumu Hula, Mark Kiali i Ho'umalu, through a public television documentary, the Walt Disney movie, Lilo and Stitch, and several original CDs. In 2003, he founded the Academy of Hawaiian Arts in Oakland, and dancers from the Academy have received numerous awards at hula competitions. Please welcome Kumu Hula, Mark Kialii Ho'omalu, and dancers from the Academy of Hawaiian Arts. Oh, no, he halele hua no ia naka no i O ka uno ia e ano i nei i nei ho i O ka hiki mai a hiti mai no o i hiti puno me te aloha Aloha e Aloha e Aloha e I got it, I got it. 
Que cago, Luis, am, o leo, he, 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 he